very simple. You can't have it all. You can't be perfect trade, be consistent, and make the max all the time. <clears throat> if you make the max, you may lose the max, the next trade, right? So somewhere in the middle is, is the correct. So the way I scale out line by line, and I'm usually early, but I don't get the fake outs and all that. So I see this as an example. You can be the extreme side, take money off the table all the time, super early, and your win rate is super high. If you have a good risk uh, management, you cut the losses, you don't lose everything, right? So, so you make money every day, but it's very tiny. You're taking money way too early, right? Way too early. Or you can be the guy that goes for the home run and lose everything the next day. So somewhere in the middle. So I, for me, this is why I have my strategy that works around the line and I trade in between. I take money all the time in between. So those are my, so I have lines within the line. Does that make sense, guys? And so over time, you, 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 that's scaling around the position. That's what I'm saying, every second shift. So, so work on exiting position. Seriously, every time you make a trade, guys, start, start looking at like, <clears throat> like how you can improve each, each day, how you can improve. So I improve two ways on my, uh, my entries. Stop trading in between lines, go for the outside lines. So my entry is much better, my sizes are smaller, but it's less stress, I can hold it longer. If you are nervous all the time, you're trading with size. If you're stopping out at the top where the sheep top out and you're getting trapped all the time, trade with too much fucking size. If you're in the right size, you have confidence, you let it go up and down and you have a risk parameter to lose, and you let it work and let the stock work because before you enter the trade, I already think I'm gonna win. Why the fuck am I getting in the trade if I don't think I'm gonna win? You see what I'm saying? First thing I do is make my plan. Where am I gonna take the profits? I guarantee you that's the first thing I think. I don't think we're gonna take a loss. Where am I gonna take the profits? Because you know where I'm gonna take the loss? My max loss. It's already predetermined in my head, right? Uh, why am I even worried about it? You always have to worry, but the max loss for me handles it. So work on, in my opinion, before you size up, because when you size up, it's 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 dude, it's it's harder and harder because you're 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 fumbling over yourself, right? You are your worst nightmare when shit goes wrong. When shit goes right, I guarantee when you size up, you're not even making you're not making anything near that you're losing because you all you, you it works like this, guys. When you're in the money, you always get out way too soon. That's a fact. Fact. You're scaling out, and you, you're not maximizing the whole thing. But when you lose, you're always maximizing your loss. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with my uh, P&L tracking spreadsheet? Okay, just familiar with it, you don't have to use it. Okay, so I started using that. Um, that's my spreadsheet. <laughs> some years back. That's now Val's spreadsheet. <laughs> and uh, five months ago, I sat down with myself, and I was going over my data, and I saw my data and I was like, here's all these great winning streaks, but man, I, I really crushed it in the end over a stubborn trade, a red trade, just one trade or one red day where I just lost all my cool and uh, just let it all go out the window and I just started trading like a gambler all over again. And uh, I said, God, you know, if I could just figure out how to eliminate these just atrocious red days or red trades, those ones that just wipe out so much hard work, man, I could really just keep this trend of my, my P&L curve going on highs and just really keep that momentum going continuously. And I said, well, how can I do that? So the way I did it, and this is what worked for me, um, is I had a number in mind and I said, okay, my number is gonna be, let's, let's say $3,000. So if I'm ever down $3,000 on the trade or the day, I just, that's it. I, I just take it off and I, and I eat it. And um, that has made a tremendous difference for me. And now, I know that doesn't sound like a very impressive change, um, but the way that helped me facilitate that is that on the flip side, I started paying myself regularly out of my trading accounts. And on average, I pay myself, I take money out of my trading accounts. You can ask Chad. <laughs> so, so, um, so that's a great point. So you, you, only you know your personality, right? No, no strategy is for everybody. So what worked for me, I'll tell you a couple of tricks that worked for me. 
One is, sometimes don't use margin. Seriously, if you're constrained to just a smaller type of, uh, like you know you only have 50 grand to spend, and now you're not using 40 day intraday, you see what I'm saying? Tell your broker just to freaking restrict your buying power. This, I hear traders do it all the time. But today, I know I, I can't control myself, like the IGC day. I left the house. Other traders restrict their buying power. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of tricks you can play. Uh, so yeah, I've built enough uh, bankroll now. I've been doing this for five years, so I have enough money, and my mentality is, you know, I'm single, uh, I don't really have too much expenses, I live at home. So if there's any time to risk in my life, it's gonna be right now when I have nothing really to kind of just cloud my judgment or cloud my emotions. So I use this year to kind of push myself to a different level, push myself and use a little bit more size and see what kind of journey that's gonna bring me to. Whereas, you know, my max size, of course, 20,000 shares, now it's 150,000 shares, right? So it's crazy because now there's a lot of different things. Whereas if I want to exit 10,000 shares, you know, I can just exit on the ask and it's no problem. But if you want to exit massive size and you're wrong, like Val says, you are your own biggest enemy. So I'm pushing the stock of myself because I am panicking out of the position myself. So what I've kind of been found by finding out is like the money is good, but at the end of the day, I value happiness more than stress, right? So something that I'm trying to discuss with Val is how do I bring myself back to reality and scale down my size and try to make that two or three or four thousand a day for five days a week rather than making 10,000 Monday, 20,000 Tuesday, 50,000 Wednesday, losing 60,000 Thursday, right? Whereas it still equates, let's say $20,000 a week, but if I do it, you know, 4,000 a week for five days a week, not only am I less stressed, uh, I have no issues with slippage and I have no other problems. So that's something that's- Consistency. I'm, consistency, yeah, going back to consistency. Because, you know, there's a learning curve anytime you adjust your size or raise your size. And what I've found is like, again, this learning curve requires you to lose a lot of money before you make a lot of money again. So what I found is like, I'm just not comfortable doing that big size anymore. So what do I have to do? That's why, you know, Bao is like my mentor. We talk every day, you know, seven days a week, and he's just told me, he's like, dude, you have balls, but you have to know when to use them. You cannot be sizing into all these situations just because you have a bankroll now. So that's something that I want to work on. That's something that I'm trying to improve myself on, kind of going forward on Monday, is to kind of bring myself back to reality and go back down to you know, setting a max position size is not a ridiculous number anymore because, you know, I don't want to deal with, you know, if I'm wrong, dealing with 10 cents of slippage on 50,000 shares, which is $5,000 of loss. So I have to always be okay with having that loss in my head, which I'm not really going to be okay with anymore. So kind of going back to reality and making that, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 a day with, you know, kind of like the max loss that Nico talks about every day, setting that, you know, 3,000 or 5,000 number, whatever it is for you, and just adjusting that. So again, you know, everyone wants like the big numbers. The big numbers are cool, they're fun, you know. Who doesn't want to make like six figures in a day? It's awesome, but like, you gotta also realize that, you know, that is not for everyone. You have to realize that to get to that level, you have to be uh, okay with losing that amount of money as well. And what I found is like over this course of this year from, you know, January to where we are now is like, yes, I'm still making money, but my stress load is a lot more. Uh, you know, I feel sometimes I'm like, I don't want to leave the house when I'm losing money or like I feel like, you know, I'm not performing at my best, uh, my best rate. So again, the way to fix this is again, I'm talking about this. He said he's been here before. He's, you know, been young. He's made his, a lot of money when he was young. He's had the bankroll when he was young. And he's been telling me like, shit, like you just don't need it. You don't need the stress. Kind of go back to the basics. Go back to what got you here in the first place. And just like the thing says, if I make $4,000 a day, it equates to a million dollars rather than making 100,000, losing 50,000. Like it's just, it's just not worth the stress though. It's not worth the, uh, the headache because at the end of the day, this is still real money. You know, I don't want to be losing a Prius every fucking day or making a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> this is not worth it. You know, it's not worth it.